questions 21 through 25 on the 2015 grade 8 AMC 8. In the given figure, hexagon is equiangular. A, B, J, I, and F, E, H, G are squares with area 18 and 32 respectively. J, B, K is equilateral. F, E is equal to B, C. What is the area of K, B, C? Well, if this is the area, then that means the side length will be root 18. Right? That's how you would be able to get an area of 18. And in a very similar way, if this is the area, then the side length would be root 32. And they told me that Fe is equal to Bc. So Fe is equal to Bc. So since Fe is root 32, Bc is root 32. Now Bk is root 18 because that triangle is equilateral. So we have to figure out the triangle B, KBC, this triangle right here. Well, it would really help if this was a right angle, but I'm not 100% sure that it is. It looks like it, but I have to be sure. Well, this is 60. I know that for sure because that is an equilateral triangle. This is 90. That's definitely true because that's a square. So if I knew that angle, I'd be able to figure out this angle. Well, that angle I can do because they tell me that this hexagon is equal angular. Equal angular. Now, the sum of the angles of all the angles in the hexagon add up to 720. And there's six of them, so I have to divide by six to get each. And when you do, you get 120. So each of these angles is 120. So this is 120 right here. All right, so now I can get this angle. I'll call it x. x plus 60 plus 90 plus 120 is equal to 360. So that means x is equal to 90 when you solve for it. Perfect. So that means this is indeed a right angle. So now to figure out the area of KBC, all I have to do is just use 1 half base times height. Base root 18, the height I can use root 32, and this is the root of 576 over 2, which is 54, sorry, 24 over 2, which is 12. So number 21, the answer is C. On June 1st, a group of students is standing in rows with 15 students in each row. On June 2nd, the same group is standing with all of the students in a long row. On June 3rd, the group is standing with just one student in each row. On June 4th, the same group is standing with six students in each row. This process continues through June 12th with a different number of students per row each day. However, on June 13th, they cannot find a new way of organizing the students. What is the smallest possible number of students in this group. All right, so we have the number of rows, we have students per row, students per row, and then we have the total number of students. And we'll just do it for a few, June 1st, June 2nd, June 3rd, June 4th, and then eventually you'll get to June 13th and you won't be able to do it anymore. All right, well, let's Look at the first few. They've told me that for June 1st, there's 15 students in each row. And let's just say there's n rows. So that means the total number of students is 15 times n. In uh, June 2nd, on June 2nd, there's uh, one big long row. So one. And obviously, since the total number of students is the same, all of those students, which is 15 times n, are going to be in that one row. And in, on June 3rd, the students per row is 1. That means there's 15 n rows. 15 times n is the total. Again, 6 students per row. That means there's 15 n divided by 6 rows. And the total number of students is 15 n. And so on, right? So basically what this means is that this is what you have to concentrate on. It basically means that that row, this part of the graph or table is all the divisors 
of 15n. So 15n, all of its divisors. And so far they just gave you a few, 15, 15 times n, 1, 6. But they're saying that you can only do this until June 12th. So that means there's only going to be 12 divisors. Each day from June 1st to June 12th, we'll have one of the 12 divisors. When you get to June 13th, you won't be able to find any new way of organizing it. So we have to basically conclude that 15n has 12 divisors. And we have to find the smallest possible value of 15n that makes that possible. Okay, not, not too much of a problem. I think I can do that. Well, first of all, 15n is equal to 3 times 5 times n. And this is 3 to the power of 1, 5 to the power of 1. If you have any number, right, for example, if we had 3 to the power of 1 times 5 to the power of 1, the number of divisors is this plus 1 times this plus 1. So 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1. So in this case, that's 2 times 2, which is 4. I'll give you another one. Let's say I said if I have 7 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 1, how many divisors does it have? This plus 1 times this plus 1. So 2 plus 1 times 1 plus 1, which is 3 times 2, which is 6. So that's how you do it. So I've got to get the number of divisors to be 12. Well, so far I've got this plus 1 plus, times that plus 1, and then times something, and that's got to equal 12, right? Because it's got to have 12 divisors. So that means this is what, 2 times 2, which is 4. So that blank has to be equal to 3. Well, how do I do that? Well, I can make that n equal to something to the power of 2. And when I do, and you use that rule, you'd put a 2 plus 1 there. And since I want n to be, or 15n to be as small as possible, the smallest possible number I can put here is a 2. So 2 is what I'm going to put there, 2 to the power of 2. In particular, this guy right here. So that means my n is equal to 2 to the power of 2. So therefore, 15n is 15 times 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, so and 15n is 60. So number 22, the answer is C. Tom has 12 slips of paper which he wants to put into 5 cups labeled A to E. He wants the sum of the numbers on the slips in each cup to be an integer. Furthermore, he wants the five integers to be consecutive and increasing from A to E. The numbers on the papers are as follows. If a slip with two goes into cup E and a slip with uh, three goes into cup B, the slip with 3.5 must go into what cup? All right, so let's just draw the five cups and let's see how we can assign them. This is A, this is B, C, D, and E. And we know that these are the numbers. And let's start assigning them. So they give us a couple. They say that 2 goes into cup E. So we got to put a 2 there. So let's just circle a 2 to say that's been already been used up. And a 3 goes into cup B. So 3 goes here. And we used up that, that one. Now the remaining have to be assigned. Well, the first thing I want to do is add them all up, all of them. When you add up all the numbers that have been given, that will help me out a little bit. And the total is 35. Now, the key to this question was that they want the five integers to be consecutive, meaning once you assign all these numbers, the total will be consecutive integers. So that means that's basically a situation of x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2, plus x plus 3, plus x plus 4, like that. 
So that's 5x plus 10 is equal to 35, and therefore 5x is equal to 25, and therefore x is equal to 5. So that means this total will be 5, this total will be 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, so now we have to fiddle around with this and figure out how we're going to assign these numbers so that we have sums of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here we go. We get a 5. Well, I can put a 2 and a 3. That should be fine. Let's see that this works. To get a 6 for B, I've already got a 3 in there, so I've got to add another 3. Circle that. To get a 7, I'll use these 2.5s, 2 2.5, 2 2.5, and 2. That will add up to 7, of course. And then the 8, 3.5 and 4.5, that gives me a total of 8. And to get the 9, I've already got a 2, and then a 3 would make it 5, and then a 4 would make it 9. So there you go. I just fit it all in. So now they're asking, the slip that the 3.5 went into, well, it's here, so it went into D. So number 23, the answer is D. A baseball league consists of two four-team divisions. Each team plays every other team in its division N games. Each team plays every team in the other division M games. N is greater than 2M and M is greater than 4. Each team plays a 76-game schedule. How many games does a team play within its own division? So let's say in Division 1 we have teams that are called A, B, C, D. So this is Division 1. In Division 2, you have teams labeled E, F, G, H. Well, the teams, when they play each other, would be A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, N, C, D. And each of those happens N times, as the question says. So A, B plays, A plays B N times, A plays C N times, a plays D n times, and so on. All right? So then the same thing holds true over here. You can do the exact same sort of story. Now let's talk about when they're playing teams against the other division. So for example, A would play E, A would play F, A would play G, and A would play H, and so on, right? Then B would play E, and you get the point, dot, dot, dot. Each of these games happen M times. So A plays E M times, A plays F M times, and so on. Now let's look at these parameters here. N is greater than 2M, and M is greater than 4. Well, that means that N is greater than 8, since M is greater than 4. Okay, and then we also know this very helpful piece of information, that each team plays 76 games. So that basically means that if you just look at Team A, we can get a formula. Team A plays B, C, and D n times each, so 3n within its own division. And then it's going to play the other teams, E, F, G, and H, m times each, so 4m. So 3n plus 4m is equal to 76. Okay, But we only have one equation, so this is going to be done by inspection make a little table, n, m, n, 3, n, plus 4, m, equals 76, and off we go. And let's see what happens. Well, let's see. If, where do you want to start? m has to be greater than 4, right? So the smallest I can put is 5. If m is 5, we don't get an integer here. We get 18 point something 6. We have to get integer values, right? If m is 6, we get 17.3. So again, no integer value. When m is 7, we get 16 exactly. So this is integers. Now let's see if it fits this criteria. Is m greater than 4? Sure. Is n greater than 8? Sure. Okay, well, that means it works. And does it work as, is n greater than 2 times m? Yeah. 
So that is pretty much the solution. We don't need to really keep going. You can if you want. You can get another integer value of 10 and 12, I believe. But that one doesn't meet this criteria. So that one fails. So this one matches. And what we are asked to figure out is how many games does each team play within its own division. Within its own division, it plays 3n games, right? These three right here. So if n is 16, 3n would be 3 times 16, which is 48. And therefore, number 24, the answer is B. One inch squares are cut from the corners of this five inch square. What is the area in square inches of the largest square that can be fitted into the remaining space? Well, the temptation is to go for the obvious, which is this type of a situation, but and that's easily going to be figured out as three times three, which is nine, but that's not right to answer. Another temptation is to go from the midpoint to the midpoints like that, and you can figure that out pretty quickly. And if you did that, unfortunately, that would be wrong also. That would actually end up being 12.5, which is, again, the wrong answer. All right, well, then how do you figure out the right answer? Well, it's the following scenario. A square that looks like this. And I think that's pretty cool. Some of you would be able to figure that out. Some of you wouldn't, but don't worry about it. That's why I'm here to help. Now we have to figure out the area of that. And the quickest way is to cut it into pieces like this, where this is a square. So now all I have to do is figure out the area of that red square and then the area of these triangles that are obviously outside of that red square. That's the quickest way of figuring out that. Well. These are one by one. This whole thing was five, so that means from here to here is three. So that's that's three and that's three. And similarly, that's three and that's three. It's a square. So the area of that red square is three times three, which is nine. And then we have to add to that four of these triangles. Well, those triangles can be easily figured out in terms of their area. You just drop a perpendicular like that. And each of those triangles is one-half base times height. The base is from there to there, which is 3. And the height is from here to here, which is the equivalent of that distance, which is 1, since those were 1 by 1 squares. And remember, there's 4 of those triangles, so I'll multiply it by 4. So that's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. So we've got to take this 9, add to it those triangles, so the total area of that square is 9 plus 6, which is 15. So number 25, the answer is C.